We're now two months into this build and I finally discovered that chairs exist and I don't have to be squatting the entire time. Game changer. How's it going guys? I'm Lockie Mac and today we're going to be doing the pre-wiring for my van. Now in this step of the build I'm essentially going to be running all of my wires and conduits so that I can continue on with the walls and the ceiling and have everything set up for when I get my toilet box system. So essentially what's been required to get ready for this job is figuring out every single 12 volt appliance that I want in the finished build and then going through and researching each appliance one by one to figure out what wire size we need, what drawer it has, what fuses we're going to need and overall making sure that we're running a safe system that comes together and ticks off all my boxes that I want out of my 12 volt when it's time to set that up. Now this is probably the most research heavy part of the build I've done so far and it's taken almost three weeks of nights after work and weekends just to figure out exactly how everything needs to go together and wrap my head around even the basics of installing a complete 12 volt system. Now it's at this point that we should probably do our disclaimer that I am not a qualified electrician and everything I've learned I've learned off YouTube which if it works is hopefully going to give you some encouragement that you can do it yourself but is a bit of a warning to say don't take everything I say as gospel. If you have any comments, feedback or criticism on how I'm doing things, please leave it in the comments below as I'm sure that will help the community. But outside of that, I do think I've done my part to research this to the best of my ability and I feel relatively confident that the methods I'm using are the best out there and are going to lead to a really fantastic 12 volt setup. I'm also going to be linking any of the videos that I found super helpful to learn in this process in the description below. So definitely go and check out some of these channels if you're still struggling with pre-wiring after this video. Now before we get into the specific of my setup, I want to teach you the basics of pre-wiring and give you a few simple rules that I found that are going to help you work out the right hardware you need for your appliances and set up your system safely. I'd also like to give a shout out to Greg Virgo's video on electric cable and fuse sizing for a van. He does a really good job of helping this stuff make sense and was a really big part of allowing me to finally wrap my head around the wiring in the van. So I'm going to be linking especially his video down below and I recommend you check that out as well. So the first thing we need to do to figure out the requirements of the hardware for your wiring setup is to determine the volts, watts and amps of each of the items that you'll be using. Now this is surprisingly easy to do for a van build because you already know the volts, 12, which means that you can determine either the watts or the amps for that circuit by using something called watts law. Now watts law is watts equals volts times amps. However, it can also be rearranged to solve for amps, which is watts divided by volts or for volts, which equals watts divided by amps. So using this law, you'll always be able to determine the watts, volts, or amps for the circuit, and that's gonna help you pick the right hardware to do the job safely. Now, using watts law, which I'm going to put up on screen, you can determine the value that you still need to find out, which is most commonly amps, so long as you already know the volts and the watts. Now, the volts is easy. We already know that 12 volt system, 12 volts, and the watts can always be found on the manufacturing information of whatever appliance you're trying to install. So for my puck lights, you can see here on the information it came with, that they run at 2.5 watts. Knowing this means we can always determine the amp draw for the system that we're going to run. So now that we know the amp draw for the appliance, the next step is to pick the correct size fuse. Now the rule for fuses that I found is that they cannot be more than 1.5 times the draw in amps, but a safe bet is to aim for 1.25 times the draw to protect the circuit. So for example, if we had a 10 amp draw, you couldn't use bigger than a 15 amp fuse, However, a safe bet would be to aim for somewhere close to 12.5. Now, the last rule that you need to know is gonna help you determine the size of the wire. And I got this one from an electrician friend of mine. And that's basically, fuses are there to protect the wire, so the wire simply needs to be able to handle more of a current than the fuse will. So using this table here, find a wire size that can handle the current drawer higher than the fuse you've installed, but still relatively close to it. If you follow these rules, you should have an effective and safe setup when you're going to turn it all on. And I really hope that made sense because understanding this is the key to installing your setup properly. All right, with those rules established, I can now move on to the pre-wiring for my setup. Now, I want this video to be as useful and informative for you guys as possible. So I'm gonna be running through each appliance one by one, giving you any relevant information I have, such as cable size, the drawer of the appliance, and what size fuse you might need. And then you'll see my process from sawing the wiring for that specific appliance. So the first system that we're gonna be pre-wiring for is my puck lights. Of the manufacturer's instructions that they came with, each light runs off 2.5 watts. We have six lights in total, so 2.5 times six equals 15 watts in total. We know we're running off a 12 volt system, so by using watts law to solve for amps, in this case, amps equals watts divided by volts, 
we have 15 watts divided by 12 volts, which gives us a total of 1.25 amp draw from the puck lights. Now to select our fuse size, we wanna aim for 1.25 times the draw in amps. So 1.25 amps times 1.25 gives us an ideal fuse size of 1.56. However, because that doesn't exist, we're gonna to go to the next closest one up, which is a two amp fuse, which we'll put inside our fuse block. So we know our wire simply has to be able to handle more than the fuse size. So using the British standard cable rating, we're going to have two cables enclosed in an insulated wall in conduit. And we use the wire that can most closely handle two amps, which in this case is 1.5 millimeter squared wiring, which can handle 14.5 amps of draw. So now that we know what size wire we're running, we simply have to run that cable from our secondary battery up to where we want the puck lights to be. So I know for my build, I'm gonna be storing the secondary battery down here by my wheel well. So this is gonna act as the main hub that my wires are running from. So all the systems that are gonna be running around the van need to lead back to this position here. So this is the terrible diagram that I made for running my puck lights. It makes sense to me and that's good enough. Time to run these wires. So that's the pre-wiring done for all the lights and now we can move on to the vent fan. Now in the user manual, it says that on max speed, it has a three amp draw. So we're gonna be fitting a four amp blade fuse to protect that circuit. And for wiring, our 1.5 millimeter wire is rated to carry up to 14.5 amps. So we'll be using that for the vent fan with absolutely no worries. I originally thought there was gonna be a couple more appliances to pre-wire, such as my fridge and my inverter. But when I was researching those products, I found that they're pretty much just plug and play with wiring that comes with the appliance. Regardless, I hope you found this information useful if you're doing pre-wiring in your own van. I've tried to lay out the process as clearly and in as much detail as possible because when I was researching, I didn't find too many resources that laid everything out in as much detail as I would have liked. But as always, if you do have any questions, feel free to leave them down in the comments below and I'm more than happy to clarify anything for you there. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like to show support for the channel and subscribe to follow along with the rest of my van build. Thanks guys.